Join us and help us continue to support the many talented people of our community. Learn how to get your business highlighted on Lacrosse Local. Go to lacrosselocal.com and click on Advertise. The 1925 American silent horror film The Phantom of the Opera is coming to Lacrosse on Halloween night. Featuring the mighty molar organ, enjoy the silent film with the accompaniment it deserves at the Capella Performing Arts Center. Get tickets online at capellaperformingartscenter.com. We connected with Shelly Staley, owner and designer of Ember, a local creator offering one-of-a-kind sling packs, purses, day packs, and more. We talk about sewing, the origin of the business, repurposing older items and clothing into new pieces, and the stories that come along with it. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Shelly Staley, and I was born in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And from there, from Green Bay, I graduated high school and I went to UW Lacrosse, which I loved. And then from Lacrosse, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona for a little bit. And then from there on to Fort Collins, Colorado. I was just visiting a friend and ended up signing a lease, and about 14 years went by and I was still in Colorado. So, (laughs) so have you always kind of taken that along with you, the design, you know, the sewing sort of component kind of are doing with Ember? It always intrigued me walking into places and seeing backpacks and purses and clutches and looking at them and just always saying to myself, I feel like I could make that. I feel like I could, could do something like that. My mom has always been into quilting, so she is the one that really got me into teaching me how to sew. We took a quilting class together. That's where I began my love of sewing was learning how to quilt first. So I made a bunch of quilts. And then from there, when I was teaching in Colorado, when I was living out there, some of my coworkers asked if they could give me some of their old, like flannel shirts from their grandparents that have passed and they asked if I could make a quilt using those items and so that's what I did and I kind of just fell in love with it and just went from there so when did the name come about the brand it looks like you know you have everything from sling packs to purses to makeup bags did you do a couple projects like those and then suddenly wanted to kind of diversify a little bit and start a business in some sense The first thing besides quilting, the first thing that I made using like zippers and actual hardware were wrist clutches. That's what I started making. And Etsy was super popular at the time. And so I just put my stuff on Etsy and I needed a name. So my husband and I actually, he helped me come up with the name Ember and it's actually the initials of Ethan Michael, my son and Booker Robert. Oh, okay. So that's the initials of it. And that's just kind of what I went with. So going through your social media, you know, it looks like you do, like you stated, a lot of repurposing of older items, creating them into newer pieces. What is that process like for those kind of one of a kind pieces? Do people just reach out and share a story or is that something you kind of pick and choose or how does that all work? Well, people definitely reach out. They see previous items that I've made on Instagram and Facebook. And they'll reach out to me and say, I have this old leather jacket that's been sitting in my closet for years and years, and I'm never going to wear it again. What else can you make out of it? Or somebody recently, their grandfather passed away and he had these wool trousers with these amazing suspenders. And she's like, can you please, you know, make something that I can wear? Cause she couldn't fit into those pants with the suspenders. So I made her a really cool backpack with the straps from the suspenders. And now she wears it around and she's reminded of her grandfather. So it's really like individualized person by person, what they're looking for. And we kind of do the whole creative process together. I want to make sure that I'm including, you know, all of the material that I can from the pieces that are given to me. And then I love to also incorporate other pieces of fabric that I have or that I 
find at a thrift store or I find at the fabric store and incorporate that too. Looking at some of your work again and hearing about the stories of people who have passed, I've always associated that with, which it sounds like it's kind of a natural progression with quilting. I actually did that for my wife for one of her presents for someone who passed in her life. Went through the whole process. They added the different pieces. Is that where this comes from? I mean, it just seems like that's quilts, I think, are passed around as some kind of storyteller. Do you know where this sort of vibe of repurposing these older things come from? For me personally, I feel like there's so much fabric out there and there's so much that people are holding on to. I would much rather use that material and different things that people have rather than go out and buy new. That's just kind of how I feel. And repurposing or like upcycling, people call it. I really like have a passion for that is looking at something and saying, okay, well, what else can I do with this besides it being just a jacket or just a flannel shirt or something like that? I really like it. I enjoy it. I enjoy the process. And I really like working with all of the people to create something that they love and they're going to actually use again. And it is intimidating taking, (laughs) I got this beautiful letterman jacket from a friend and I was a little hesitant on like taking it and making something else out of it because it was a cool, it was such a cool vintage jacket already, but she was just like, Shelly, go do it. So (laughs) it actually turned out to be three really cool job kits for her and her brothers. So yeah. Yeah. It looks like another project you did baby wrap, you know, Mm -hmm. that was put into multiple different pieces trying to visualize this, you know, hopefully people look it up, but it's, you know, it's more like art versus craft taking this very colorful piece and turning it into these different sort of, I don't know exactly what you created there or what those are called, but uh, yeah, those were, it was like backpack. It was a backpack. I remember in some makeup bags and some, some clutches and things like that, some things for her kids too, that she wanted. So, yeah. So is there any particular favorite project or any item you like to make, or is there a story or anything like that? That's kind of like a, something that really kind of resonates with you while creating this. Um, a favorite. (laughs) Yeah. That's a tough one, Brent. Thank you. (laughs) Something that I'm really proud of is that backpack with those suspenders on it. It was something that I feel like turned out really it was pretty sweet. So, <laughs> but I like all the stuff and it's like, I, I just really enjoy it. And it seems like the people who I make them for, they really enjoy them too. And hopefully I can continue doing it. So if people want to, you know, kind of check out your work, is there availability to see you in person and pick up some work? Is that coming up down the road or is that something that mostly people just go to social media? It's usually right now. I mean, the a goal would be to have like a little storefront or something where I had like a studio and back and I can work right out of the studio and back of the store. But for right now, it is just social media. It's through, I have a Facebook page, Ember Bags, it's called. And then the Instagram handle is also Ember Bags. That's where you can find it. And I usually post a lot of that stuff to my personal Facebook and Instagram too. So... Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.